Hello, people. Oh, I was in the wrong classroom. I was like, ready? Okay. All good. Jeffrey timelines, as usual. I cannot believe we are. My son told me this morning he's been in junior high for a whole month. I'm like, what the heck? What is happening? What is happening with this time thing? All right, everybody can hear me okay? Yeah, okay. We have a very, uh, I don't even know the word. Hi, Karen. Big class today. Mm. <clears throat> and I think, I think it's really, I think it's going to be helpful as I do every week. I'm always so excited. I'm always like, yes, this is the class. And then it's like, mm, I don't know. All right, uh, I got notes today. I thought I was actually going to channel this, but since I've been channeling source, it's like, it comes so fast. Like, um, like if you guys were in the channeling class last week, when we did that, uh, self-trust time travel work, it was really fast. It, and again, sometimes when I've always been like a really fast teacher, but, um, or I don't know, messenger, I'm not a teacher, uh, messenger. It's like, but now it's like when, now that source is coming through, it's like, like I said, it's like almost like so many different voices coming in and it's coming in through one filter. And now my Gemini skills are very being used to collect all the data and, and uh, drop in. So let's just recap last week. Last week we were talking about every week, we're going to be talking about the relationship with self, self, higher self, which is Holy Spirit, which is the only way out of hell is to allow higher self to be the driver of your quantum biocomputer, aka the body. Uh, I think I would probably like this class in its entirely on YouTube only because it's going to be like a complete thought. And I, I want to gift. Um, sometimes when I receive a lot, I feel like really inspired to give and, um, and I know you guys can relate, especially since I've been working to, through the dual game. So obviously we know by now that we are God incarnated into physical density to forget, to remember. That's the game. And you can sit there and go, why would we do this? Why would we do this? Well, why do you do anything that you do? It's, it's, just, it's, it's just an experience. And remember, you take no thing with you except experiences. And so the moments that count the most will, will be part of your true Akashic records. Although every moment is recorded through the subconscious, when you kind of uh, go through your life path, like kind of like you sit down and look over your, your life, it will almost be like you're looking through pictures and you'll be like, oh my God, remember this? And they're like, mm, you know, but what, what the highlights are going to be is those, those moments where you felt unconditional love. Now, a soul will drop into a human body to have three, four moments of that. And it's enough. It's enough for the soul to feel unconditional love three times in, in human form for the whole existence. And you may like, oh, wow, like, I didn't have my really much joy. I didn't actually have a fun childhood. I didn't, really didn't even pay attention to some of those joyful moments. But the, the, the soul's reason for being here is so different than your ego's version. It is so different than the inner child's version. The inner child is here to create. It is not here to be perfect, to create good. It does not care. It's here to create. And the higher self is here to facilitate that, which means bring life into all that you choose. So you're always working with your higher self, but you can have the physical experience of being um, inverted. So the game of 3D is really the inversion of heaven. And if you took some of my earlier master classes, we just we, we learned how to play the duality game, which means choose the opposite thought. If you're in hell, choose a thought that's heaven. If you're in, you know, if you're in pain, choose a, an opposite expression because the work we did earlier in the master class was remember when you look right, you're looking at super consciousness. When you're looking left, you're looking in the subconscious. And if you're still looking in your subconscious to figure out who you are, you're going to figure out who you were. And that's not going to feel good. 
is not going to feel good. So the game that they want to um, really have you pay attention to, because you are playing a game. You are not just waking up in life, doing your to-do list, and then going to sleep. Like, this is a game. And the more people that hack the game and then beat the game, and I'm going to tell you exactly how to beat the game today. You beat the third dimensional game by mastering it, and you master that by full radical acceptance and a reconciliation and choice. Okay, so we're going to work on reconciliation today. We're also going to look on at you being able to create two points throughout your day. So instead of you trying to create a two point life. So when you create a two point life, it's almost like I'm willingly creating a new timeline. So a timeline requires two points, right? Who I am versus where I am. That's the journey. Now, you may not know who you are if you're still basing it off of where you are. This is where the unworthiness comes. This is where your lack comes. If you knew who you were, you wouldn't feel lack. You wouldn't feel separated. But if you are basing those two points on where you are today, you're not going to feel that who you really are. Because who you are is the, is the inclusion of all you've ever been. But it is also you completed. It is you finished. So there's a version of you that's beat this game that is working to connect with you through the higher realms, through the, the downloads of higher self to give you coordinates through higher vibrational feelings. This is how higher self communicates with you. If it feels really good, like, I mean, good in a way where it's not like, I don't mean lust or starvation or desperation or, you know, anything that's coming from lack is, is literally based in kind of an emotional um, separation. But I'm talking about like a feeling like, and the way I judge my feelings is, ooh, I feel this way today, but how am I going to feel tomorrow? Because you'll notice that if you get an urge or a craving, that's ego's definition of intuition. It is not necessarily higher self. Higher self would rather you be in pain today and then have joy tomorrow for the rest of your life. Ego says pain. No, that means I'm going the wrong way. And that's just not how this works. Because pain gets you distorted and pain gets you out of circumstances. It's almost like the PTSD work that works the best is to put someone back into the triggered situation, but in now in a safe environment. So how you notice if you mastered a trigger or a lower pattern or a um, subconscious program is that you will be triggered but the trigger will actually be a safe place for you to heal. Like, like a new partner comes in, triggers me in the same way that I've been triggered a hundred times yet is able to hold space for me, allow me to speak while I'm angry, while I'm having a tantrum, hold space and love me unconditionally during the trigger. That's what I'm talking about. That's amazing. And I have been experiencing that, which means in the moment I'm like, man, this trigger again? But what turns it on, turns it off. So you cannot heal in an unsafe environment. So what you will do is you will manifest that trigger until the environment becomes safe. Now, how do you create a safe environment? You become safe. You become safe. So one of the things that we covered, and I think it was a non-duality, I'm not sure, in the masterclass was, and, and then we did like a, a side quest and we did a divine feminine workshop. Obviously like 95% of my, uh, my, whatever you guys are, friends, family, uh, are feminine. Okay. Stuck in your masculine shield. So we've been kind of working on this for a few years now to reclaim our divine feminine energy. And we just finished a 7,000 year old patriarch leadership suppressive, um, leadership on this third dimensional world. And now the game has shifted into divine feminine, which is unconditional love. So whether you like it or not, you are in a new game, but because you have free will, you are free to continue to create hell with your creative power. You have that choice. If you do not want to make that choice, then you need to figure out 
If you're still living any part of hell, where am I choosing it? Now, because we are in this Aquarian energy, it's so it's so much more about unity. It's the end the end of days of the Lone Ranger and the Pioneer and the reclusion. Goodbye. Now it's inclusion. It's sisterhood. It's family. It's unconditional love. But we've got to heal from what hurt us so that we can experience what is now the new game. Because you get stuck in the old game and you think that you're going to figure out how to play this game. And this game is almost like a game where it's like, ha ha, you can't win. That's how you win the game is you realize you can't win in separation. You cannot win in separation unless you play for the dark and then you don't really win. Okay. So we're going to kind of go back and I'm going to highlight something. So the way they want you to play this is they want you to have paper and pen. So I'm going to give you a minute to just go grab like, paper and pen so you can make some notes. Obviously, we're recording this. So if you're not in a place where you can uh, really give 100% of your attention to this, do this later. But this will be something that you will want to either, the, I would suggest you have these notes by your bedside because you're going to want to check into this when you first wake up because you wake up in the game. And then when you go to sleep, you leave the game. So when you go to sleep and you leave the game, you're playing a different game. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of that, but you're playing in different dimensions and you're actually playing different games when you sleep. So it's just like when Luke is playing a game and he stops playing the game. Let's say it's like a video game that that game is still being played somewhere and you've like put your body to sleep so it can reboot and then you go play a different game. So your consciousness is now playing different games. And a lot of the times we're playing different games that actually help this game. We're going and we're working in higher realms to figure out and plan and project like the next coming attractions and the next parts of our journey. When you wake up, you're going to wake up in one of your parts, in one of your fractured consciousnesses. And this could be what the moon is doing. This could be what retrograde we're in. This could be what you ate last night. There could be a million reasons why you wake up in the part that you wake up in. And again, our parts are going to be fractured through trauma, which usually has the impact of rejection, abandonment, shamed, guilted. OK, you are um, not allowed to be yourself. So this is what's going to create your fractures. Now, the fractures that we're actually experiencing here have so much to do with our creative power. Every time you're fractured away from the holistic nature of you, then those parts are now separated from source. Okay. Source is your currency. Source is your abundance. Source is your true intuition. Source is your support. It's your resources. So when you do not have access to creating or manifesting instantaneous abundance or prosperity or any of it, where you're going to look for in which part that is separated is running a separated program. It feels separate. You know, that's a part. That's all it is. One thing that we've been kind of drilling into our concept here is that when you are looking at all of this, and, and again, this is my kind of my, my biggest piece of advice that I've learned is stay neutral. Stay neutral when you unpack this. Because again, if you are emotionally involved in what I'm going to present today, then you are quantum entangled with the outcome. And if you are emotionally entangled with anything that you're going to observe today, that will keep you asleep. Because what quantum entanglement does is it keeps you in another focal point. Instead of looking at from the mountaintop, you're looking from the valley where there's predators around you. But if you go to the mountaintop, you can see everything. And this is this is where our eagle eye view wants to be in this game. Realize that there are obviously millions of different timelines happening all at once. You you look if you look right, you're in a different timeline. You look left, you're in a different timeline and it's instant. But we won't we won't shatter the the ego just yet. We're going to kind of create it into to keep things very simple just two games one is where state of being scarce city prosper city this makes it very easy for your ego to understand vibration okay uh because when you say oh scarcity it's like oh yeah that's a mindset no it's a state of being 
Okay. Scarcity is a state of being where you believe that you are lacking abundance of what you need, want. Okay. That's what that state of being is. Now, when you come into third dimensional reality from heaven, okay, which is prosper city, everything prospers. Everything is infinite supply, infinite intelligence, infinite resources, infinite support system, which means that playgrounds, playmates galore, okay? Scarcity is, I only get to play on this playground with these people with this. And I'm also afraid that it's going to run out. What I do have is I'm afraid it's going to run out. If you're still playing that, do not judge yourself because the hallucination of the hologram is so intense that anywhere you look in your physical reality, you're going to see scarcity. If you're looking in your physical reality, if you're looking in within the vast universe of the I am concept, it's infinite. Your supply is not out there. It is in here. But in order to play Prosper City and be the avatar of Prosper City, you have to go and reconcile, reconcile your own avatar, which is now been split in pieces. But instead of looking for all these parts, which we have, we've looked for the guilt and the shame and all these things, we're going to go back to extreme basic, basics. And part of the inversion game, so hell is the inversion of heaven. And so to keep things very simple, because everyone's like, oh, it's so complicated. It's really not. Third dimension is the opposite of heaven. All right. It is where you create form from the belief that you are separate from God. That's what the third dimension is. I'm creating my reality, believing that I am separate from God. Okay. This makes it really easy for you to forgive yourself when we need to do that. That's all that is. And of course, that's part of the game. So you forget so you can remember. It's a game of hide and seek and hot and cold. It, it is how source gets to experience itself, lacking its own divinity and power, and then remember itself. And then through that, it expands. Just like contraction expansion. Like the woman's body is literally the universe. It's a universal map. The womb, the void, the dark, the light, it's all contraction expansion. And so when the universe expands, it knows itself more. And when you get to the other side of this, you are going to know yourself so much more than you could ever imagine. And I know that because I thought I knew a lot 15 years ago. I knew nothing about myself. Nothing. I knew concepts. I knew analytical spirituality. I knew how to channel. I knew how to use my psychic abilities, but I did not know the, the being that was doing those things. I did not know her at all. And everything I was seeking in my physical reality was to know myself, to feel myself, to express myself. And through all of that abandonment and rejection that happens, you finally return home. So when we look at Prosper City and we look at Scarcity, what inversion do you need to make to play the other game? Because it's literally, there's no real healing required. It's just a timeline shift. It's creating a new version of yourself that is using different operating system. Using a different operating system is going to allow you to quantum leap from the perspective of your human. Your human is going to have a, a harder time understanding frequency. Your human has a harder time understanding things it cannot see. This is why we always usually turn it over to the ego because it's like, see, I can prove that we're in lack, right? I can prove that we're in scarcity. Well, proof is the demonstration of a belief system. That's what proof is. You need to say that again. Proof is just demonstration of a belief system. And what is a belief system? It is when you become your own lie, when you become live. So let's unpack that word, belief, okay? It is either the becoming the lie or you're becoming live. You're just an actor. 
And whatever you've been programmed with is what you will act out. So you're, you're going to have to look at where, in a completely neutral fashion, where have I been programmed? Everywhere. Time, relationships, health, and money. So it is, it is a step of, first and foremost, reconciling gender. And here's why. And here's why. In scarcity, have you guys noticed, because again, I like to prove to your belief systems where we're heading here, that in the third dimension, especially when you look at status or you look at uh, what you would consider like darkness that has been illuminated over the last years, what's happened to gender over the last, like, let's say 100 years? Because if you're not aware of this, they've been resetting our third dimensional reality about every 100 years. And the reason they can do that is because by the time the grandparents die, there's no there's no remembrance of this. And then they rescatter the children all around us. So even though we are part of this because we're, we're incarnating over and over again, if you could see what was happening 100 years ago on this planet, you would be like, we, we, we lost intelligence. Because if you could see the buildings and the inventions and the technology that we had available to us, like if you've ever been in other parts of the world where they have not completely demoed like the castles and the buildings. It's like, this is quantum technology all over the planet. But the United States is like um, mini mall of America. It's like just structures that literally fall down when you, you know, when you own them. Like I bought a brand new house a few years ago and, you know, it was close to a million dollars. And within six months, the cabinets were falling off because that's how cheaply things are made. They're made not to last because this game wasn't made to last. This game was not made less. It was only 100 years. So now we are in the new reset, but because you have free will, you can play the old. So you're going to kind of make, and you can either have two pieces of paper or you can draw a line down the middle, but you want to really use the, the nature of duality to see where you are. Because if you play the non-duality game without fully accepting where you are, and you're trying to play in the law of one without recognizing where you are in separation, then you will be in denial of your own core broken parts. And this will cause spiritual bypassing. So we want to be in full acceptance and neutrality of understanding these two games. So in the game of scarcity, you are programmed that you are separate from God, which means that if you're separate from God, then you need a God in this game. Now your God in the game is going to be money. It's going to be authority. It's going to be uh, what you're good at that you can make money at. It's going to be other people to help take care of you. Okay. Because you're not streaming direct in prosper city. I am creates reality in 3d. I am not creates reality. So it's just an inversion. It's very, very fundamentally simple because the higher you get in consciousness, the more simple it gets. It's like, really, it's this simple. It is. But ego makes everything so complicated because when you're in scarcity, you become to think like a criminal. Like you think in desperation and manipulation and your assumptions and your self-concept is built out of lack. And so you're overanalyzing, overthinking, overprocessing over studying, over grooming, you're doing everything overly because you're trying to compensate for the lack. Okay. And of course I was doing this too. This is, this is what we do when we're programmed. So in scarcity, just to kind of like reflect back, we're going to look at first the definition of sin separated in nature. Nature means name. So if we go back to your first name, not your second name, that's your slave name. But your last name is your slave name. Your first name is the name that you and creator chose for this particular avatar. Now, if you look at the meaning, it has everything to do with the theme you created. Your only true purpose on earth is to create a joyful, prosperous reality where multiple people win. That's it. It don't matter what you do and how you do it. It's just... Create a unconditional loving life that is joyful, that is harmony, that influences as many people as you possibly can. That's it. So that's the that's the game. Whether you do that in the spiritual world, artist world, in the money world, it doesn't matter where you do it. You get to choose. So there are choices here. But when you're playing in scarcity, you get what you get and you don't throw fit. 
right? Because it's like, you're happy with breadcrumbs. You're happy with narcissism. You're happy with tyranny, right? Because that's just what it is. But when we go back to nature, nature is what you are. Nature, nurture. So let's look at the fundamental traits of who you are as a nature. If you are in a feminine body and and not from a wounded place, but from a true heart-centered place, you feel like a man, then you're going to go off of the deepest part of your feeling, not the way your body looks, because we are moving into this trans kind of like, uh, the, the whole trans community is, it's a blessing and a curse. It's waking up the rigidity and the, um, the lack of choice, okay? But at the same time, it can be based in distortion and it can be based in trauma as well. So that's why a lot of times when they go through the surgery, they go, wait, hold on a second. And again, what they were just really feeling was I'm different because I'm an alien <laughs> and I'm in the wrong body. Wait, I'm on the wrong planet. So a lot of healing is happening, just so you know, behind the scenes with that. But what do you want to look at is just your game. OK, if you are in a feminine body and you feel even if it hasn't been safe, even if you don't know how to truly rise in your divine feminine, okay, then you're going to need to know what your nature is, right? What your nature is. We have to study mother nature to live here, right? So you're going to need to study your nature and your nature is going to lead with the feminine qualities of how you were created, which is I absorb, I mirror. I receive, I multiply. Just feel that, ladies. This is who your nature is leading. Now, you have masculine energy too, but that's going to be secondary. This is what you're going to lead with. I'm going to read that again. I multiply, I absorb, I receive, I mirror or reflect. Now, just look at that in the third dimension. How effing scary is that? <laughs> How scary is it that I absorb, that I multiply, I that, that I reflect, right? So this is why we have created our masculine shield. Because if I'm not safe, what am I absorbing? OK, I know as a mother, there's been so many times where I'm like, oh, I wish I could take your pain away from you, from one of my kids. So the desire to absorb is your nature. And you are absorbing. You are multiplying. What are you multiplying? OK, what are you reflecting? Which means what are you seeing in the mirror and what are other people seeing in you? And what are you receiving? So one, one thing I've noticed with myself and my, my, uh, my girls here is that receiving has major wounding because if I were like, oh yeah, God made you to receive. Now think about all the things you've received. <laughs> You're like, wow. Ah. So again, when our fundamental nature becomes traumatized, then what we're going to do is because we are duality, we have choice, I can flip in to the other side of the spectrum of the I am concept. Now, what is the masculine? It's going to be the exact opposite of feminine energy, and it works in perfection to create reality. Let me show you. So divine masculine is, where is it? I repel. Now you know why they don't hear you, ladies. <laughs> I repel. I divide, I project, and I give. Now this is, this can be taken negatively or positively. So think about this. Wouldn't it be better for a man that was on the front line of his family's security to repel other people's advances, right? So if you think of it, like it's almost like it's waterproof. Everything is just going to roll off the back of a divine masculine when he's in his true container, when he's in his true masculine. He's not going to take things personally. He's not going to get caught up in his emotion. He's going to repel. Now, that is not a negative or a positive. Either is absorb. So if you look at absorb, it's the opposite. Uh, the next one is I 
divide. So if, if feminine energy is going to multiply, masculine energy is going to divide. What have we been dealing with the last 7,000 years? Divide and conquer. Separation. Now, how this works for divine masculine in creating reality is compartmentalizing. You know, they can put their feelings over there and then they can go to war. They can... They, they can look at things differently than the multiplication and the mixing of the feminine. It is on purpose that they are in the dualistic nature of each other. Uh, I project, which means they're going to act out what is reflected. So it's like, this is, this is kind of why where when you are in your unhealed feminine energy and you are with an unhealed masculine guy or vice versa, this stuff does not feel good. You do not want to absorb. And you're wondering why they don't listen, why everything just seems to roll off and they don't take anything seriously. They forget in five minutes you even had a fight. And that's actually a great quality when you are creating reality in a healthy way. But when you are in a wounded state, this feels like rejection and abandonment on both sides. All right. And the last one is I give. I give. And so if feminine energy is I receive, then masculine is I give. Now, ladies, let's look at our masculine shield. We love being in the masculine. We love repelling. Right? I was like, I'm closed down. I'm repelling. I'm blocking out. I'm avoiding. Okay? We love to divide. Right? Uh, this is mine. This is yours. Right? We love to project. OK, and we love giving more than we love receiving when we're in our masculine shield. So as we are learning to recover this and rebalance, what happens to the physical vessel that was designed to basically be 60 percent leading with feminine and, you know, 40 percent masculine, which means that even without a partnership, you're going to play this duality game inside of your body. But when this becomes distorted, this has a huge impact on your physical body because it's not only I absorb versus I repel. It's the hormones that happen with each experience, with each thought, with each belief system. And again, it's like we have building hormones and we have growth hormones. So when I am in a masculine shield, then I am going to grow and build like out of control. Now, the divine nature because the feminine nature, nature kind of like the game is created in time, it's created in freedom, it's created in space, and then it's created in like resources and abundance. So feminine energy manages the realm of abundance and space. This is why space is so important to you guys, ladies. All right. And abundance is your nature to already be full. You got like for for million eggs sitting in your womb you are already pre-gamed which means every manifestation that you ever need to create is already inside of your body an egg waiting to be fertilized ladies it does not happen out there it is in your own womb you are complete you are abundance of nature you are the womb of creation you are your own matrix matrix means mother and it also means womb all right that's the core definitions of those two, that word. So, right, the masculine energy is here to illuminate and create basically the experience of manifestation. This is where our conversation with light and dark come in. Unfortunately, the void or the darkness absorbs, right? So if you have black leather seats, it's hot when you sit in the summer, yes? Why? Because it's absorbing the heat. It's absorbing the light. Light, light, light reflects light. It reflects light. It does not absorb light. This is why you don't want to be all light and love. Because part of your shadow absorbs. So it works in balance. So what I'm saying here is the zero point energy of these two games is balance. You do not have to get into a state of pure positive abundance and prosperity every moment of the day. All you're seeking is balance. That's it. And your balance is going to look different than your husband's balance 
or your wife's balance or your sister's balance if she's more masculine or something like whatever people are deciding to be fundamentally that is not coming from a wounded state that is coming from a heart centered place is what they what program they're running and and who they're choosing to be with their higher expression even if they have a body that has a different gender okay so we're not this isn't the shaming the gender types here this is just masculine feminine energy so what keeps us in scarcity is when this is not balanced that's it because when we look at absorb multiply mirror or reflect and receive from connected to god connected to source look at how different that looks just from your own perspective like if i was connected to all of my divinity i was connected to all of my birthright all of my intuitive information i could speak to my guides hear my guides i was open and flowing believing i deserve believing i was allowed believing i was worthy being confident enough to be in the light even with all the darkness that is being withheld in your womb like in that state absorbing would be amazing Okay, because it's just like when you have a really good piece of chocolate and you just want to like savor it because divine feminine is pleasure. It is pleasure in nature. It is not supposed to ever feel empty. So when you guys feel empty or hungry, you're in your masculine energy because technically the pain you feel in your body is you're too full. You're too full. You're too full because you've been absorbing your whole reality and you might have the feeling of hunger, but it's actually is think, think about when you desired to be in a relationship. Okay. What was the thought? The thought was, I want some, I want to love someone. Okay. And I want someone to love me, but you thought it was because you lacked something, but technically it was, you were so full that you wanted to give okay when you are in the idea that you could lack anything you believe the partnership is going to fulfill you when actually it's going to empty you so that you can feel the relief of sharing love so the difference between like uh, to me and again everybody has different feelings about this twin flame versus soulmate but to me soul's mate means like companion and a compliment to your soul twin flame to me means it's going to catch on fire and you're going to see all of every part of yourself in that relationship and a lot of the times the twin flames is what brings you back to your soulmate which is you okay then when you become your soulmate you will attract soulmate energy because they will be their own soulmate self-love attracts self-love okay lack attracts lack no matter what a loving, kind being you are, you're going to get the lack in the other person that they are imbalanced with that's going to match your imbalance. So if you don't feel safe to receive, okay, then you're also going to be in the distorted of your masculine energy. And this is what causes the conflict in the right and left hemisphere. So the hemisphere then can be directed by the neocortex, or we like to say neo like in the matrix, non-emotional observer. So what we're going to do is we're going to like create this list. Like you're going to write scarcity. Don't put scarcity because I don't want you to think it's a mindset. It's a state of being. Okay. That includes all kinds of self-concepts, subconscious programmings, biological, you know, uh, reactions, muscle memory, cellular memory, and generational information. So it is a, a state. Okay, so scarce city is kind of like, it's it's the capital. Uh, it's the capital of lack. So it's like, that is where we all kind of get put into. Even if you're in a billionaire family, there will be some scarcity. It just not might not be the same game you're playing, but it will be because third dimension is the separation of source in only a belief system. It's not actually separated, but this is what we're programmed to believe from a very, very small age until we buy into it. When I buy into it, I invest, and then I basically play the game of lack until I wake up and have remember I have a choice. So if you want to actually get to Prosper City, which is what we would call the new earth energy, which is inside of you, then what you're going to do first and foremost is you're going to reconcile your gender distortion. 
all right? And how you're gonna do that is on and scarcity, you're gonna write, I absorb, I multiply, I mirror, I receive. And you're gonna find those negative belief systems, like your first reaction, how do you feel when I say you absorb? Then what will happen is all of those times that you had to absorb or swallow or do all these like things, and I don't mean that sexually, but you know, it's like you're having to swallow your pride. You're having to swallow what you want to say. You have to hold everything inside. And not only that, but you have to do that for people that you love because you believe that that's your job. It's also very much in your nature to do that as to hold, like, you know, mom's got the big mom purse. Mom, hold this, hold this. Everybody's putting stuff in your bag, right? Like, like that's just feminine energy here. So then when you look at your masculine energy, I repel, I divide, I project, and I give. You can look for, like, memories are going to start popping up for you. Belief systems are going to start popping up for you. This is where I would, from a non whatever, non-judgmental state of being or a neutral state, of course, go to the observer. Otherwise, you're going to get real triggered by this. Sit with it and be like, hmm, okay, so that's why I'm still in scarcity. It isn't that you're not worthy, that you're not smart enough, that you haven't done enough spiritual work. It is literally you're separated from nature. And so as long as you're sinning, you are in sin city, scarcity. Okay. So that's what you want to look at. Then you're going to create your prosper city page or line down the middle so you can see the duality of it. And you're going to write the exact same formula. Because it is the same formula on both sides. The game has the exact same rules on both sides. But one game is I am separate from God and one game is I am. That's it. That is the only difference between the two games. So when we look at the belief system, okay, when we look at the belief system and we go, where's my notes on that belief system? There it is. Um, the belief system is going to create proof. Now, proof is where your ego is going to hold you hostage, okay? Because as soon as you have proof, the ego can say, see, I told you this would happen. I told you this was going to happen. Or I can't believe this happened again after all the work that I've done. But the thing is, is the proof is going to continue to happen until you can become neutral or have someone be neutral for you in the trigger. And it will happen because that the ego has been doing this for your whole life. It's been running this aberrated program of division. It's been running this separation program. So the ego lives entirely outwardly focused. That's another inversion. Ego lives outwardly focused, okay? Higher self lives internally focused. When you are internally focused, you are the universe. You and I inverse. We're in a story together. This is me and I, my, me, myself, and I. The body is the mediator. It's the container of the soul, the spirit, the ego, the consciousness, and all the rest of the goodies that go along with reality creation, all right? Now, when you're looking at a trigger, you have to understand that ego believes that all triggers, and, and to me, a trigger is would be falling on the negative side, or at least the concept of negativity. All, it, all a trigger is is, is activating dormant pattern. That's what the definition of a trigger is, at least what source gave me. Activating a dormant pattern. That's it, which means that it was already inside of you. Activating a dormant pattern, belief. So when you get triggered, this is why I've been saying for the last like three years is the trigger is, it is a biohack. Because if you can illuminate what's lodged inside of you, I don't care how bad it feels. If you can remain neutral to it, then you can be like, oh, let me see where I am in distortion of my own reality creation technology, which is the body. This is technology. And again, if, if I am playing in the wrong gender and it's coming from a wounded place, I'm blocking my blessings. I'm repelling God. I'm dividing family. I'm dividing the my spiritual friends because they still have judgment. You see, it's the division. So if you look at the, the masculine traits, repel, divide, project, and give, this is in a negative, wounded place. 
That is the third dimensional concept, just right there. And this is why the divine feminine has been basically enslaved to the point where she has lost conscious awareness of her value, where divine feminine is creation. It is, it is literally the essence of the universe that it, without feminine energy, there is no, there's no future. There's no unconditional love. So this is why divine feminine is like missing from the Bible. It's why it's missing from like the everyday way of pursuing. So now that we're moving back into the Sophia consciousness, which is the Christed feminine, we're, we're learning about, oh, wow, we've been in this masculine, wounded, driven place to enslave feminine energy. And now the whole, the whole thing is flipping back. So it's like, okay, we played this. Now we're going to play this. So now it's the rise of the divine feminine. Okay. And we'll be in this story throughout the golden age of Aquarius. We will be in this new divine feminine rising, but you cannot rise in your feminine energy with all this distortion because you won't feel safe with yourself. You will not trust you. You will not have faith in you. And you are creator and creation. You are prayer and answered prayer. So if you are not working with all of you, then you're going to be separate. And if you're separate, you're going to look outside of you for help. You're going to look outside of you for knowledge. You're going to look outside of you for God. And that's what the, those are the beliefs being the lie that we have to, from a neutral place, choose to let go. So I can give. So if I want to heal my feminine energy, I can give all my problems to God. So ladies, if you do not have a safe container or a masculine man in your life who is creating security and providing for you, don't fear. God will be your container until you attract one physical reality, which means that your own masculine energy can be your container. And when, when you really start to be both of these aspects, you will begin to create people, places, and things that are acting out your own behavior. Okay, so whatever you're attracting right now is either just the reflection or the projection. And so if you can just play off of simple like organization tactics from a non-judgmental place, it basically just is like, I, I want you to look at this as, as neutral as the forks are in the wrong drawer, right? The spoons are in the wrong drawer. And I'm just going to take some time and reorganize. And then I'm going to allow the system to reboot and flow. So this is what you want to see is where you feel blocked, where you feel stuck, where do you feel trapped, where do you feel isolated? Who's making you feel you're not allowed, right? You always want to go what, where, when, how, when you're asking these internal awareness questions, you know, what's manifesting, who's involved, um, where, when, and, and how long have I been sitting in this? in this blocked point. Now, we've said from the beginning that you are the only one that can block your flow. Source isn't blocking your flow and the matrix isn't blocking your flow. You, based on the belief systems and the proof that you have received throughout your life and the cellular memory, muscle memory, self-concept and assumptions of yourself, you block yourself. I'll tell you exactly why I was blocking myself. It wasn't safe for me to receive. OK, I wanted to give and I didn't have enough to give. So that threw me into unworthiness that threw me into lack. So when I want to give generously and I can't, I feel like what's wrong with me? Something's wrong. I must not be worthy of God. And this is just normal, like human stuff. This is very inner child stuff we're talking about here. This isn't like, you know, this isn't a doctorate here. This is like inner child stuff. So if I feel I can't receive because what I have received has hurt me and I don't have what I want to give, I might feel empty. I might feel lacking. I might feel hungry. I'm none of those things. 
I'm literally just flowing my source energy through distortion that gives me an experience, a circumstance of new, like, these two points are neutralizing themselves so no flow seems to be created. So feminine energy is flow. It's a flow state. Okay, last week in the fellowship, I think I'll have that fellowship class we did last week on the elements. Let's put that in the superhuman class, just, just as like a bonus class because there's a couple of people that aren't in that group that I think that would help. So I don't have to reteach that or re remind you guys of that one. And again, it's using the four elements to help you break patterns. Okay, you can use anger to break a program, fire. Okay, you can fire up your desire to get your motivation back. You can use air, breath, to let things go. Okay, you can use ground to create stability. You can use ground to connect to source and Mother Earth. And you are going to use um, water to purify and create flow. So using those elements is just... Like I'm telling you, this is just basic hardware and software here. There's like, there's no need for you to understand quantum physics. If you can understand gender, you can understand nature because nature is gender. It's like everywhere in nature you go, there's going to be gender because this is the nature of nature. So when we are inverted or playing the scarcity game, when let's say our conscious mind believes that we're playing prosperity or trying to play prosperity, keyword try means trauma. So if you're trying to create flow, then it was so awesome. One of one of the classmates here, I did a private session with her. And, and again, I always have you guys analyze your physical reality as like the metaphor of your mirror. And she was saying like her hose to hose off the backyard porch. It wasn't like there was no water coming out. Right. And so it was just like full blast water, nothing coming out. And then when she realized, like I, we, we said, well, let's check where you are blocking your own flow. There was no blocks in the hose. And so these were her exact words. And I thought it was awesome. She goes, literally, I'm cutting myself off at the source. And so she then she manifested that in her hose so she could mirror back to herself, reflect back to herself what she was doing based on her own division. Division. So the way that the third dimensional um, disconnection program works for us is it just uses our own gender to manipulate ourselves into distortion. So if you think about it, what has the matrix for what has the the matrix pushed that are third dimensional matrix not divine nature matrix pushed women to become masculine and what does it create in men femininity too much ejaculation creates female hormones okay why is porn free so this is a whole society now that has shape shifted because of scarcity because my favorite line in Jurassic Park, life will find a way. So if I have to change my gender to survive, I will. All right. Now we're living in thousands of years of that. And now we're getting children born that are changing their gender. We're just manifesting what it is we've been forced to do. But that's proof of a belief system. Proof is only going to show itself if you have a belief. So if life is proving to you, that is your, oh, I got to find the belief there. Because proof is just an indicator that there's a pattern and a program. And then you want to look at the opposite side of a trigger, which is a glimmer. And a glimmer is when you get triggered positively, right? It's almost like instead of you jumping into defense and feeling attacked or rejected or abandoned, all of a sudden, you feel included, you feel validated, you feel supported, you feel honored, you feel trusted. So you also want to make sure that you're paying attention to these things, too, because your human brain is a problem solver. If you're using your brain to figure out who you are, you're using a very limited old school system. The brain is a problem solver. It's going to be like, yeah, I got 10 compliments today, but this one, this person said my cheek looked funny. That's what you're going to focus on if you're using your third dimensional brain instead of your neocortex to analyze all of this. So we've got 
basic definition of sin, which is separated from my nature. Who is my nature? What body are you sitting in? There are rules of the game that you signed up with, with playing that body. And yes, you can change them if it's coming from a heart-centered place and the universe will support you. If it is coming from a wounded place, source will not support you in that change, okay? Um, let's look, fear, guilt. Okay, so we've looked at our fear, we've looked at our guilt, we've looked at our shame. Those are byproducts of trauma, okay? The only way we get like toxic shame personality is from being humiliated over and over again. The only way that we actually get a guilty conscious or feel guilty or feel like self-sabotaging and self-punishing is because we have been guilted so many times, which means it proved itself. It's proved itself. It doesn't happen one time. It's happened so many times that it's been it become part of your self-concept. So we've done that workshop, right? That was the um, uh, the Ascended Masters workshop, right? The fairy tale how to work with your shame and guilt and bring them back into balance. So now what we're doing is we're getting to the end of this game here. And that's where I feel at least this masterclass is, is, is we are in that ascension journey. And now we're going to fine tune. We're going to be like, like a guitar that isn't playing. That's where you want to look at gender. All you do is tune. All you do is tune. So let's go back. Let's see what time we're at. We're good. Let's go back to I absorb ladies. Okay, what would you prefer? This is this is it. And then I will give you the reconciliation formula. But first, right, on the side of prosper, prosperity, what do I prefer to absorb? Not what do I have to absorb? Okay, what do I choose to absorb? All right, because remember, 5D is I choose my salvation. I create my own reality. In third dimension, I create reality through separation of God, which means I have to create with a system, not a source. In third dimension, I multiply. What do you want to multiply? Because I know you're done with multiplying drama and chaos and body issues. You can also look at, well, what have I multiplied in the past? Because again, that's scarcity. That's the old version of you. That's a 3D model. That's obsolete. You can't even, no one will even pay money for that on eBay. Okay. But the 5D physical body is balanced in harmony. There is no like sexy, like superhuman female or super masculine. It's like just balance. Balance is God. Zero point energy is God. So we're not looking for extremes here. We're just looking to balance. That's it. What do you prefer to reflect? What do you want to mirror? Right? Like I did was with my guy we were at the airport and he was um, frustrated, I guess the word is. And I was just mirroring him. And and then I was like, oh, I'm being a brat right now. And he was like, yeah, I go, but I'm just mirroring you. He's like, oh my gosh, you are. But I was demonstrating it differently. But it was like funny because it's like we both could laugh about it. Oh yeah, you are marrying me. You're just behave. You're just you're just uh you're just showing me basically what I'm doing internally, and that's what we do. And men don't like that. Okay, when we are reflecting back to them the fact that they are dividing from themselves. So what do you want to receive? What do I choose? So in your prosper city, I choose to absorb, I choose to multiply, I choose to mirror, I choose to receive. And this is your Christed I am consciousness for Prosper City. Now in your masculine energy ladies, okay, I repel, what? I choose to repel, okay? When you say choose, it's like, ooh, I get to. And repel does not mean push away. It just kind of means it's gonna, it's just gonna kind of like glide off. It's not gonna stick. It's not gonna absorb in, all right? I divide. What does that look like for you, okay? In a prosperity form, I project, which means project is kind of like act out or do, okay? And then I give. What we've loved giving is we've loved 
pretending we were source, give help, give rescuing, give advice, give treatments, but really in the feminine bounty to really become prosperous, I give means I turn over and surrender. And I give what I get, which means that this is a, a, when you are in your healed feminine energy, you are not giving more than you're getting. Okay. Doesn't mean you're getting in the same way. Like kids can love you and then you can give them what that is in, ex, in exchange of that, but it won't be coming from a wounded place. You won't, won't be giving to rescue someone. You won't be giving to please someone. You will be giving to match energy. You will also be giving away giving away pain, giving away surrender, like working, like take it. One ha thing that happens in scarcity is you become a hoarder. So you don't like giving things away. You're like holding on to everything. And source is like, yeah, you're holding on to lack. So I can't give you abundance. And I'm holding on to belief systems that are in lack. So this is kind of like what you need to do with your own journey here is I can't, I can't unpack the details of this because I don't know how your particular incarnation looks. But if you were going to look at this, both of these elements, masculine and feminine, one from the negative side of separation, one from the positive side of inclusion, it would be a completely different daily experience. Like your daily experience would look different and feel different if you're operating from your gender nature of creation through prosperity, overflow, life, okay? Because one cuts life off and one increases life. So in Prosper City, this is where you don't have to worry about aging so quickly and let, losing people and, you know, having to choose between time and money because when masculine and feminine are working together, then it is expansion. So imagine like masculine and feminine in its healthy balance is going to multiply the fruit. So like, let's say in third dimension, you're a tree that doesn't get very much water or light. You're like barely hanging on. You might have one apple. But when you are in Prosper City and you're in that masculine feminine uh, balance, then you're a whole orchard. So you're self-generating abundance, self-generating prosperity, self-generating sunlight from that. So where like, negative belief systems about self come in because your beliefs about the system don't really impact this. Your beliefs about yourself impact this. So when you're like, oh, the system won't let me, that's, that's basically saying you're the system. So what you want to say is, oh, I've bought into, I've invested into believing that that was the source. And so because that source is like, the, you know, a sociopath, it may feed me, but it's also my abuser. So that's why it hasn't been safe for women to receive. That is why it hasn't been safe for us to uh, be in our own abundance and our own space. And then masculine energy, their container naturally is time and freedom. So when you're in your masculine shield, ladies, you're like time and freedom is like what you're all about. But that's the masculine toolkit that you use secondary. So if you look, okay, how does my space feel? My home, okay? How does my abundance feel? You can find where your wounded feminine and wounded masculine energy is in space, abundance, time, and freedom. And again, this is done when done in a very neutral, loving way where you're not in judgment of all this distortion. Because here's the thing, you don't have to heal any of this. You guys were in 4D, solid 4D now, moving into fifth dimension. This is not like, oh, let me take years to do this. If you would just understand that creating balance shifts your timeline, you're going to go to a parallel timeline where now you are the balanced version of yourself which means the people, places, and your things are going to match the balance that you hold within. You're the projector of your reality. So whatever light is being shown through you is what you are seeing. So if I think, oh man, I can't absorb what my husband's saying right now, that's not the problem. 
I have bought into that I have to absorb negative energy because of commitment. See the difference? Versus I choose not to absorb that and I choose to absorb the Holy Spirit instead. Sitting in meditation, just imagining, absorbing Holy Spirit, um, just absorbing God energy, going in nature and absorbing it. You can choose that in your jacked up situation. You are more free than you think you are. You do not need him to go or someone new to come to do this work. Matter of fact, it won't work. You'll just maybe take a break from that movie and then start the same movie over. Because again, it's going to be auto-corrected from the inside based on the reflection that you're going to make neutral, like just make a new choice. Okay. So what do I choose to absorb? Well, what can I absorb in the matrix right now? Only what feeds you, well, only what expands you. So if you're still watching the conspiracy theories, you're absorbing yourself with that. If you're still watching the political debates, you are absorbing that. If you are still letting your partner abuse you, you are absorbing that. And you can choose the I am presence, the I am creator within. You can call upon it and ask for support. You, you might be in a dimension full of demons, but you have an army of angels, literally. And calling on them may not feel like believable to the ego who can't see anything that's not real, but it is still just as real as what you are perceiving because we are in the age of illumination now. This is how we know all of this ick that's going on, but it's just distortion. It's just it's just the game that's opposite of heaven. It's, a, it's like the opposite of your hometown. And you've lived there so long, you've adapted some of the traits and some of the beliefs and some of the routines and you know, you, you've got the accent. So now you're going to spend time at home, which means that the way you're going to find heaven is being with you, inside of you, not out there, not to go to a place that feels like heaven, but to create a place that feels like heaven inside of you. Because this is the way, ladies, that you can stay totally safe in a really horrible situation and quantum leap yourself out of that situation. You just have to say, okay, I'm feeling like obligated that I have to absorb this. Another way you're absorbing is rejecting it because rejection is resistance. Resistance is just an amplifier. You're actually making it stronger if you're in resistance of it. This is why I'll give you the formula. Okay, this is the neutralizing formula. The first things first, you're gonna create two games because ego, blends all this so you're like am i in 5d like you don't know this is how you know right you're you are gonna have one foot in one foot out until you start creating daily balance daily balance not oh yeah i forgot to do that work like this needs to be job one relationship with self balance and harmonizing you are an instrument source is using to create ultimate love you are the guitar. If you're not in tune, no one's going to want you for the orchestra. Okay, you're going to be in the garage collecting dust. So you are the instrument and it is your job through the awareness that you have now to just tune. Tune, that's it. Balance, 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 balance. Okay. So the formula is, once you get the two games, and again, gender is exactly the same on both sides. One, one. You're manifesting through separation of God. One side, you're manifesting with source energy. Different game. Now, this is how we neutralize, because that's the key word. Neutralize, and then that's a reconciliation. First and foremost, because you are creator, and because you have been creating all of this, even with unconsciousness or ego or patterns or whatever you want to assign to it. It doesn't matter. You still created it. So number one, and we've given this formula a million times, but it is 100% accept what is. That's it. Oh, I accept. I accept that I've been absorbing all this crap. That's why I'm so heavy. That's why I'm waiting right? This is why I can't, I feel stuck because I'm absorbed too much negativity that I can't, my body can't hold enough light for me to even remember that I'm God for half the day. 
Okay, that's it. That's all. That's all you gotta do. And then secondary is to reflect on it, to look back. Like, like I said, just look at, okay, I can see how I created this mess, but no judgment, no judgment. It's just a mess that just needs to be organized. Okay. And reconciled and then regen recreate it. That's, that's it. If you can do this with no judgment, you will fly into 5D with your angel wings. If you get caught up into the stories of, well, this is my mom's fault, blah, 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 blah. Well, then you're going to have to go do a lot more work. But if you're like, okay, I'm just going to be the Neo here, the non-emotional, I'm ready to get through this. Okay. The next one is to forgive you. If you're not quantum leaping after a lot of forgiveness work, you're not forgiving the right person, which is you. You might even have to forgive yourself for being here. You might have to forgive God for forgetting about you. I don't know. You're the only one who knows truly that story. But I've been through all that. Like self-forgiveness because there is only self here. There are actually no one else. There's no one else in your world except you. Everyone else is either a projection or a reflection. So self-forgiveness, even if it's like, I forgive myself for being asleep so long. I forgive myself for absorbing everyone's crap. I forgive myself for multiplying these problems. I forgive myself for multiplying this lack. I forgive myself for mirroring other people's insecurities, right? And I forgive myself for receiving less than I deserved or receiving abuse. So when you do the forgiveness work on the feminine work and the masculine, then you start to see the charge go to neutral. Because remember, a negative and a positive looked through neutrality, like coming together is going to create a neutral. So that's what we want to do is we want to create neutral. Neutral is where flow state is. When you are neutral, like when you're doing art because it has to look good or you have to sell it, you won't be in a flow state. But if you're making art because... It's just fun and you don't care what the outcome is, you're in a flow state. Flow state will drop out if you need to have a certain type of experience from it. That's when you lose your joy, okay? So staying in this neutral place, forgiving who you have repelled. Well, you've obviously been repelling source. You might wanna forgive yourself for that. You might. Want to forgive yourself for repelling source, okay? So you might want to forgive yourself for dividing. Where have you created separation? Where have you pushed people away and things away and divided yourself from seeing certain parts of yourself? Like, where have you created that division because you didn't like certain things? And then where did you project onto others and project false truths onto yourself? Where have you projected onto your inner child and the opposite? So, and then what do you need to forgive as far as giving? Where, what have you given too much of? Okay. And those are the areas that I would start to start breaking up this charge. And a lot of self-forgiveness work, then you will start to feel lighter. You will start to feel more like in control, like creator again. Then you're going to go into the validation. Now you're going to see how powerful you are because when you start to validate, wow, I am so powerful as creator that I can manifest an abundance of lack. I am so powerful as creator that I can manifest someone demonstrating unworthiness to me. See, this is where you validate the creator for the crappy game you just played because it takes so much more energy to block source than to allow source. It takes so much of your life force energy for you to reject source energy than it is to allow. So you really can validate what a powerful creator you are to get so lost in a game where you forgot you were God. You can validate that. Like, wow, one of the things I would say to myself, if I can create this much lack, and all I have to do is let go. Can you imagine how much abundance and prosperity is awaiting? Because as stubborn as I am, right? 
If I can block my blessings because of the, this story, then what can I do when I return to flow? So you actually can kind of start to get excited again because it starts to be this neutral, forgiving, then goes to validation. You must validate, validate, validate. You are not shaming any part of yourself. You are not guilting any part of yourself. You're not in resistance or rejection or resentment of any kind of self. You're actually like, Wow, what an amazing creation so far. And now I know what I want to experience on the other side. Now I have fully learned what lack is. I know what abuse is. I know what suffering is. I know what the wounded feminine energy is. I know what the wounded masculine energy is. Now when I'm in Prosper City, I am going to have endless compassion. So there is a lot of wisdom that can come out of validating this. Of, and and you, you're you literally like, it's almost like after a play, all the actors are going to come out on stage and bow. So when you look at every casting character that played in opposition for you, you're going to literally go into gratitude for them. So validation and gratitude. Thank you for everyone who triggered and showed me where my dormant patterns were, showed me where my pain was. If you go into validation and gratitude, you are elevating your frequency and consciousness. You're being responsible. You're being grateful. You're being in forgiveness. You're being aware. You're being loving. You're being validating. You're shifting into the fifth dimension right now. Okay. Then last one is to make a new choice. Now you're going to look at the same breakdown of formula of nature, feminine, masculine, and prosperity, and you're going to start writing in your I am choices, not your I am forced programming, but your I am choices. And then the last step is to become, which means to act that out. So what I was doing that really kind of like leaned me forward was I would wake up Whatever part I woke up in, it didn't matter. I would pull out my, my I am intention. So like, oh, I'm going to really focus on what I'm absorbing today. I'm going to focus on what I am multiplying today. I'm going to focus on what I choose to mirror and what I will receive today. So it's almost like I set an intention to lead in my feminine energy in that healthy way, which means that we're so used to being in the, the negative side that you might go the whole day and not even realize you absorbed stuff. But if you make a conscious intention in the waking up space of my avatar will be intending to, this is the state of being I'm creating, okay? Then at the end of the day, you go back and you go, what did I create today? You literally check in with yourself as a creator. What did I create today? Did I create order? Did I create lack? Did I create judgment? Did I create harmony? Okay, that's fine. Um, you can go. I know it's over time. Uh, what, what did I create today? So that's what Source started saying to me at the end of every night is, what did you create today? And I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, let me think. What did I create today? So I'm like, so it's going to be very childlike. It's not going to be like I created, a, you know, I healed cancer today. It's going to be more like I created a... a I created joy today. I laugh today. So creation is not destruction. So then what you're focusing on at the end of the night is what did I absorb? Good. Now I can give it away. What did I multiply? Great. Tomorrow I can change that. So now you're going to sleep by reconciliation. And then you're taking like 24 hours a day and you're practicing your new state of being of nothing other than the worthy nature as a child of God. And it, honestly, the more childlike you make your day just based in these things, the more you're increasing flow, the more you're in allowance, the more you're remaining in a non-state of judgment, and you're taking responsibility for the parts that you get to play here. Okay. So I know this was a lot, but it's actually extremely simple if we don't overcomplicate it. And, and that's pretty much it. So then, you know, Divine Feminine, you are here to receive, not work your tail off, to not to be the rescuer, not to be the savior, not to be the overgiver, not to be the oversharer. Your job is to receive, multiply, 
mirror and absorb. So get conscious about where you're doing that that's keeping you in scarcity. Because we are literally option option to be in third dimension right now is like you really have to be stuck in your programs to be lost in scarcity right now because you, your body might be still in scarcity, but you're like, I don't want to be in scarcity anymore. So now you need to kind of like create that union between the I am that you've been working on, that true self, that higher self. Now getting that body empty, purified, neutral, grateful. So you can be grateful for the triggers when you look at it like this, because they're showing you a trigger is a GPS. It is. It's showing you where you're active, what you have a dormant activation point. And it is so important for you to be able to get triggered, but have something to do with the trigger instead of just survive it. If you just survive a trigger, I guarantee it's coming back louder. Because you are in the age of illumination, you are in the golden age, which means that things are going to naturally multiply and everything's going to get bigger and louder than that what you're looking at. What you are focused on, what you buy into, what you invest in. These are all money terms. So this particular balancing of your own masculine feminine energy will heal your finances. This will heal your relationships because you are not fixing anything out there. You are shifting into another timeline where that problem never existed. And I am seeing that in every area of my life. I don't have to speak any of this to anyone. I change, the mirror changes. Also, the projections change. Because when I change source, the projections that come at me have to look different. So less Mr. Smith effects happening, less echoes that are happening, because I can actually calculate with a formula each morning and each night what I'm choosing to do with my technology. You cannot get to 5D without your hardware and your software. Like this is it. This is where this container is. The universe is inside. Ladies, all your manifestation is already done. It's waiting. It's hibernating. It's germinating. It's in the eggs. Masculine energy. All you have to do is give to receive, right? So it's it's so much easier than the distorted game presents. But ladies, we're too full. Guys are too hungry. That's the way they create it to stay in separation. Right? I have too much love to give. And guys are like, I'm too empty. And you're like, I just gave. So this is another conflict but I hope that this resonated with you because this was literally I've been dealing with a lot of like um wounding in my feminine energy and then of course there's generational there's like thousands of years of repression you know and there's rage there's grief that needs to be processed but if you actually go from the formula that I just gave you to accept reflect forgive validate Right, gratitude, choose new timeline. Don't choose, don't choose a new partner, choose a new timeline because then you're allowing source to choose for you whether you get an updated model or you get a whole new playmate. Don't make that choice because you could be making from a wound. Whatever is in your reality right now, you look at it like it's intentional, it's perfect for your shift. Then when you shift, then you get to be surprised because it will always, 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 always be better than you could imagine from your 3D mind, okay? So we're gonna do that one more time. We're gonna accept, reflect, forgive, validate with gratitude, choose new timeline, become. Become means act as if. You cannot just be like, okay, I chose, where is it? Which means that if you are go, 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 and you wanna be more in your feminine, then you're gonna to have to learn to slow down. If you wanna be more in your masculine, you're gonna to have to go, go, go more and stop being so emotional. But it's all a flow, it's all a flow. And I don't mean men that you can't feel your feelings, you're just going to not take them personally. You're gonna use them as a tool, but you're not going to get lost in them. That's what happens when masculine energy gets too much feminine hormones, they get lost in their emotion. And then now it's like both, both people are in distortion because as soon as a, a masculine energy gets too emotional, a woman must become masculine in order to create 
balance. That's what's happening everywhere all the time. So if your guy is too passive, you're going to have to get aggressive. And that's not healthy for your hardware, ladies, because you're not built to run on testosterone. You're built to have estrogen, which makes your atmosphere joyful, which inspires masculine energy to create. Okay? So there is... God is a genius. And so are you. So when you get back to your nature, you start going, oh, yeah, this is how this works. It's all manipulation, but it's not from lack. It's just manipulating energy based on desire, which is fire. Okay? Okay. I'll see you guys at the fellowship. And I think we're going to have some story shares today. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, otherwise, please reach out if you have any questions on this. Uh, you can watch it back, take your own notes, be responsible, ability to respond to your own nature. Okay. Bye guys.